So funnily enough, due to the weather conditions, our flight ended up being redirected to a different airport. And instead of landing in Gatwick, we ended up landing in Stansted, which basically meant I had a couple of extra train journeys. But on a positive note, I got to see a bit of London, which was nice. Arriving to Finchcox felt like stepping into the magical Hogwarts world. The darkness made the place look even more atmospheric and characteristic. Finchcox was originally built in 1725 as the country seat for the Bathurst family. In the Second World War, it played host to soldiers and evacuated school children before being used in the 60s as a ballet school, but most people remember it as a piano museum. In 2015, the museum closed its doors after operating for nearly half a century, during which time it made a name for itself as one of the world's finest collections of historic keyboard instruments. Many feared that the 18th century manor house would be taken over by developers and the music would come to an abrupt stop, but the new owners have kept the musical tradition alive, with parts of the house being used to host piano courses suitable for adults of any piano level. Here we are in the 18th century vaulted cellars, which have been converted into spacious piano practice rooms, each containing a grand piano. I've never seen anything like that. This is really fun because I mean, you can play it away. Mm -hmm. And you can see your people and it's... Yeah. The thing about the piano is actually it is quite solitary. 100%. After Neil gave me a brief tour around the house, I was guided to my room, which was another big surprise. I have seen pictures of their boutique rooms online. However, they looked even more stunning in real. Ensuite bathroom with a chandelier and a bath? At that late hour, I was convinced it was all just a dream. I'm sitting in this room and I honestly can't believe that I'm in Finchcocks. It's late and I should probably get some sleep, but I just can't grasp onto the thought that I'm currently staying at a manor house that's got 10 grand pianos. I'm definitely going to bring you along, show you around what to expect when booking rooms, show you what the practice rooms look like, what a recital room looks like. Ah, oh, there's just so much in this place. I'm going to get some sleep and I'll chat to you tomorrow morning. Good morning, sunshines, and happy Friday. Waking up this morning felt surreal. I'm not gonna lie, I struggled to fall asleep last night because just the thought that I'm staying at this manor house, which is, by the way, massive, and I already got lost a couple of times, found it really difficult to settle because, of course, I'm excited about the course and meeting a lot of new people, but also just the thought of 10 grand pianos in this manor house. It's unreal. So the weekend courses start on Friday evening, the arrival from 6, settling into your beautiful rooms, and then at 7pm everyone meets for some welcome drinks, chats and a piano tour. But now in case if you prefer to arrive earlier, they have the early check-in option as well. And I believe that the majority of the participants have the early check-in, meaning that they're going to be here from 1 onwards. Therefore, since the manor house is so quiet and empty, I'm going to use this opportunity to walk around give you a little sneak peek of this stunning place and yeah as the weekend continues I will make sure to capture some of the beautiful highlights and moments so hopefully you can get a feeling of what is it like to spend a piano retreat weekend at Finchcocks. I would like to start this little tour by showing you the beautiful recital room. The space is very special as it has the stunning Steinway Model B. The Model B continues to be produced in both New York and Hamburg factories. It is used at Finchcox for recordings, master classes, and recitals. I should also mention that you are allowed to practice on this beauty, and it is one of the students' favorites. Let's move on to the next little surprise. I honestly will never forget the moment I stumbled across the other grand piano. I was in the kitchen just about to make myself some coffee and suddenly I see a tiny small room at the back with a Bechstein. Seeing all these grand pianos made me feel like a kid at a candy store. I just 
wanted to try them all. Okay, I have a question for you. Where is the coolest place you've ever practiced piano? Because for me, it would have to be the cellar at Finchcock's. Construction began on the Finchcock cellars in the late 17th century. And today the cellars are the epicenter of the piano courses. The space is used for workshops, master classes, and it also has a relaxing area where coffee is served all day. But of course, the coolest fact about this space is that we have six practice rooms, each of them containing a grand piano. The vaults feel like they were built to accommodate a grand piano, and the acoustics are spectacular. I love the fact that each vault has been fitted with a specially designed glass door. It decreases noise transmission to a minimum, yet the fact that you can look into each practice room and see people practice it makes it more collaborative and exciting. And even though the whole place feels like one big piano paradise, this particular room, also known as the hall, was definitely my favorite. This is also the place where most of the recitals and performances take place. And so stick around because I will be sharing a couple of snippets from the amazing performance we were given by Warren Mealy Smith. I honestly feel like this place just keeps on surprising me. I'm just having a little coffee and I thought I'd go for a little stroll around the garden. I need to know how big is this place because it just feels like some sort of Narnia. It's like there are so many random little paths and places to wander around. It feels like something out of a fairy tale. It's nearly one o'clock, which means that the guests are going to start arriving soon. I'm very excited to meet everyone. Even though it's been lovely to enjoy a peaceful, quiet morning, Spent the morning filming, shooting some content and practicing on all of the 10 different grand pianos. So it was quite productive. Going to finish my coffee, head back to my room and a little bit of rest before the madness starts. And just when I thought I've seen it all, I've stumbled upon another little hidden gem. This shed-like little house happened to be Finchcock's music library. Tons of music sheets, scores and old books all organized by category. And for a musical nerd like myself, this was a very exciting sight for my eyes. And as a course participant, you're more than welcome to go through these scores, borrow the music sheets, explore some new exciting repertoire. And I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel like the the weekend is just not enough and I can happily see myself living here for a month at least. After a little rest, I received a very exciting visit from a very special lady. We've connected through Instagram and this was going to be our first time meeting in person. I also had the honor to meet her perfect little boy, Hamish the dog. Jenny is not only a wonderful soul, but also a fabulous singer, violinist and a teacher who also works part-time at Finchcock's as a course director. Jenny, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day day and coming out to meet me. I had the most beautiful afternoon walking with you and Hamish in the sunny countryside, visiting the beautiful Scotney Castle, and let's not forget our efforts trying to pull Hamish out of the water and dropping your sunglasses into the river. It's definitely been a funny afternoon and I can't wait to meet you again. So welcome drinks wasn't until 7 p.m. Therefore I decided to spend the next 15 minutes practicing. Oh my gosh, so, that's true! This was all the music that was left from the collection and then they spent hours and hours sorting it all out. So amazing. Um, it's brilliant. And finally, we got to finish our day with delicious dinner. It was an evening filled with laughter, new connections and of course lots of piano chats. Another glorious day. The sun is beaming through the windows. Today, Saturday, marks as the official first day of the course. It's going to be intense. It's going to be a pretty busy schedule. But let's start the morning slow with lovely breakfast. I got one boiled egg with a little toast, a little fruit bowl, strawberry and banana smoothie. Mmm. It's kind of the fun after you brush your teeth. Black coffee and a little pretty cream of chocolate. Today we also have individual lessons with Lauren. 
comment here. I wasn't 100% sure about a particular piece that I would like to work on and get some feedback on. I've decided that I'm going to stick to walls of 64 number two. I'd love to get some feedback from Chopin enthusiasts and an incredible pianist like Warren. So yeah, today's gonna be filled with practice, forming, classes, workshops, and then Chopin recital by Warren. A lot to look forward to. I will do my best to capture all the moments so you can be part of this super pianistic day. smooth line I'm going to move the phrase on at the beginning and then I'm going to take a bit of time as we get to the end of the phrase so then. Followed by the beautiful lunch, it was time for some performance classes. This is another great opportunity to get some more feedback and insights from Warren and a chance to play in front of your peers. It's always so motivating to watch other people's progress. Hearing about their struggles makes you feel less alone and seeing them achieve their piano goals inspires you. Not to mention this wide repertoire you're being exposed to. Pretty intensive day, incredible day, filled with lessons, lots of piano practice and performing as well. So yeah, normally back at home, of course, you don't experience such a pianistic day, but saying that the schedule is really well planned out. There are coffee and tea breaks. You get spoiled with lots of treats like cake and cookies in between your practice sessions. And of course, you've got freedom to do whatever you want during those specific intervals where you have have the time slots to practice so of course staying at this manor house with 10 grand pianos i just want to keep on playing and so literally every time my lower back would start hurting i'd tell myself okay we're gonna take a break but then i come back to the room i rest for five ten minutes and just want to get back to the grand pianos since i know that the time is limited here but anyways just before i came back we had a little informal piano club session this is a chance where anyone that would like to play in front of others can get up and perform so it is lovely to listen to others get some new ideas and inspiration for the new repertoire and it's nice to encourage and support each other so after that i felt completely wiped so i came back to the room spontaneously decided to take 
ba a bubble bath so that was lovely the rest of the evening is looking super pianistic we've got a recital at 7 p.m with warren our teacher he is going to gift us with the chopin recital and i cannot wait for that also for the recital there is no dress code however since it's our last official dinner together and it's a performance slash concert you're more than welcome to dress up so i've actually brought a little dress with me so yeah i think we should do a little funky transition let's do it our magical night with another beautiful dinner, incredible music, incredible food. What else would one need? It's Sunday, our last day at Finchcox. Our morning started at 9am attending another fantastic workshop with Warren, focusing on the importance of pedaling, learning about the correct and incorrect technique. I have to say, after just doing that once, my hand, my fingers are already hurting a bit. If I was to sit down and practice that like that for half an hour, I'd probably have to take a week off. So here's another alternative. Press attention to the thumb. I'm going to do it slowly. There's a few things going on there. The thumb comes in. What we're combining that is this kind of closing, opening, closing, opening movement. With something else. Can anyone else describe what's happening in my hand? The, 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 the wrist. The wrist. The yes. wrist. Rotary. Yeah, that's the word. So we're getting a dynamic of movement in the wrist. After the brilliant workshop, we had a coffee break and then went back to the practice rooms. Here I'm playing my beloved Handel's Alamand. Then decided to change the practice room. Haven't had the chance to practice on different pianos. It's been interesting to compare the differences in tone, touch, and even the pedal sensitivity between different models. And finally, 
our performance class. I decided to play Chopin's Polonaise in A flat major, a piece he wrote at the age of 12. I will be sharing the full video of my performance, so if you want to see my nervous face, make sure to stay tuned. <laughs> Well, so it's think, am I right? You're the only person to play from memory today. Yes. And I'd be really interested to quickly ask all of you, particularly you, Mia, what your process is for playing from memory. I actually struggle with memorizing the pieces because I'm such a slave to the score. There's What's your process? Of, there's a couple of ways, I think. I tend to rely on my muscle memory. Rarely I do this exercise where I just take a sheet of manuscript where I have that before mm. the left the component. And I'm very also oral if I'm listening to the piece and I remove the music and I'll try it. Yeah. And then of course there's harmony, understanding the, the structure of the piece, mm. and knowing where it's going, chord progressions, etc, etc. Mm. So it's knowing the piece more detail. Everything you just said, I think it's all of the types of memory that we utilise when we're playing for memory. And it's so helpful to recognise where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are so that you can consciously work those separately. Train yourself to play by ear. Train yourself to look at the score and memorize. Get used to analysing the structure of your piece. You've got your A section, your B section, your C section and know where that starts. And You're simplifying the journey through that piece. I'm raising one issue with you. I've never seen anyone looking away from the keyboard much you were looking up at the ceiling for about half of the I performance. Like I mean like, yeah, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> but it's really interesting because to me that tells me that you're not relying so much on the visual memory. Although then obviously you were so it was very much kind of obviously muscle memory and all of it was coming into play. I look away because I want to hear it better. And so it helps you to focus on the sound. It was beautiful. It. it wasn't affecting at all what you were doing. And I think, honestly, guys, the more we do anything that you forget, you know, take every opportunity at home, with friends, with family, with cats, live with the dog, your partner. The process of learning for anything from memory involves trial and error. And that was a wrap. What an unforgettable weekend. Thank you. Well done. Woo!